what is my least favorite smell? This is not something that I think about very often, despite working on negative smells the vast majority of the time. Hi, I'm Dr. Ali Lukes, and I'm a supervisor in English literature here at the University of Cambridge. My PhD thesis, titled Olfactory Ethics, the Politics of Smell in Modern and Contemporary Prose, recently went viral online. I posted a photograph of myself holding this hardbound copy of my thesis on X, formerly Twitter, with the caption, thrilled to say I passed my viva with no corrections and am officially PH done. The post amassed over 120 million views. It also attracted the ire of a particularly militant strain of misogynists and anti-intellectuals. My project received criticism from those who were willfully misrepresenting the nature of my research, smells are racist became a misguided refrain, and from those who believe that a woman's only role is to be a mother and a wife, while others suggested that my work could never be of any benefit to society. My thesis studies how certain authors of the past century used smell in literature to indicate social hostilities, such as prejudice and exploitation. It also connects these representations of smell to our real world understanding of how smell operates in society. For the past month, I've been discussing my work online and as a result, my ideas have been taken up by so many people across the internet to better understand how smell intersects with prejudice and the broader role the sense of smell plays in our lives. Those who didn't believe in the worth of my thesis ultimately gave it a platform to prove its worth among a public audience. So the post gained attention immediately over the first 24 hours, but it was vastly positive. Um, lots of kind people saying congratulations on your accomplishment. And um, it only received negative attention when it was retweeted by a couple of right wing accounts. Initially, as someone who typically doesn't spend very much time on social media. Even the positive attention was a little discomforting to me. Um, but I didn't feel terribly, I don't know. Um, I didn't feel terribly threatened. Once the vitriol started coming in, then I started spending a little bit more time, mostly out of curiosity because I had always intended to share my work, um, not just with other academics, but with the public. And it was interesting to me to see the variety of responses to it. I think it's important to translate academic research for public audiences because so many of us work on things that are relevant to public audiences. I think also there's, there's something to be said for just understanding the world around us better. I think that, you know, knowledge has value in and of itself and academia is not the only, it should not be the only place where knowledge is shared. I've received so much more support than I ever anticipated receiving when this post went viral. It has been, um, it has been amazing to, to, to see people's willingness to stand up for, for research, actually. It's not, it's not really about me. It's about people questioning the validity of research. Because I think that this was an enormous fluke to some extent. Um, but I, I do think that the attention I've gained since the original post went viral has to do with the fact that I was polite to the critics and that I didn't stoop to their level. My advice, I suppose, would be to not listen to, to people on the internet who know nothing about your field of study <laughs> um, and to assume that you will find an audience of people who are interested in what you do because the vast majority of people are actually really interested in learning more about things that might seem niche or might seem unusual. That's kind of what's brilliant about humans. <laughs>